Welcome to Bits and Pieces Quilting. Today I'd like to share another trunk show of my very favorite quilts, scrappy ones, so stay tuned. Hi, my name's Michelle, and today I'd like to share with you another trunk show of my very favorite scrappy quilts. Please check out my previous video of 10 other scrappy quilts in a trunk show from the link in the description down below. Scrap quilts are my favorite quilts, and I'm thrilled to share with you this collection of 10 scrappy quilts. The first quilt I want to share is a batik quilt. I call it Falling Leaves, but it's based on a pattern by Pat Speth called Ozark Maples. I did it all in batiks, as you can see, and the colors are so rich. It feels like fall. And it reminds me of Canada and the maple leaves that fall from the tree every fall. This was given as a gift to some very good friends. And I hope it reminds me, I hope it reminds them of me. It was a great way to use up some small pieces in my batik collection. And I think the result came out really cohesive and really quite beautiful. The next quilt I want to show you is this braided color wash. This was a project that my quilt group did together with a quilt teacher called Fran O'Neill and her braided color wash quilt. This requires a whole ton of scraps. All the pieces are quite small. I think they were two inches by five inches perhaps, but to get enough variety to successfully make this quilt, you need hundreds of pieces. And so this was perfect for a group of quilters. We each had instructions to follow. You had to have small prints in a variety of colors. And then we each cut a selection of fabric from our collections and exchanged them with the others in the group. That way you had your own fabrics plus little bits from everyone else's fabric collection as well. And what a color challenge to figure out how your braids were gonna progress from one color to the next. You couldn't decide in advance that you wanted a braid that started in green and went to brown because you might not have the fabric to make that happen. It was really a journey of seeing where the fabric would take you as you were laying out all of those pieces. And in many instances, you needed to lay the pieces down and then step back and see if the effect was a cohesive wash of color or if they were jarring bits that stood out. In my case, I chose a dark navy blue background to really try and highlight the fabric and let it pop off the quilt. It was a challenge for sure, but a really enjoyable challenge. I think it really stretched my creative ability and the idea of what colors go together and lead into what other colors. It was a fun project and I'm really glad I finished it. This next quilt is a tumbling blocks quilt. This is a scrappy quilt with a little bit of just about everything tossed in that falls within that traditional kind of color family. There's not a lot of brights in this quilt. It's all the traditional more muted fabric colors but I love the way that it just feels warm and cozy. It has a little bit of a fall, autumnal vibe to it. This is quite a large quilt and I think it's perfect for snuggling. And it's a pattern that I have made on a number of occasions. One of my recent videos talked about upcoming project, which included another tumbling blocks quilt. I really like the look of these and I like the way that it uses parts of my collection and makes the most of my scraps. This quilt is another stash buster for my brights. It's a slightly complicated block with some half square triangles, some four patches, a couple of flying geese, but ultimately it makes a block that is reminiscent of a half square triangle, which means there are hundreds of different setting possibilities for this block. I chose a, a trip around the world type setting just to really try and highlight the, the white rows or board, the white diamonds that you get that kind of pop out of the quilt with the colorful then diamond in the middle and then the tracings of color surrounding the white 
the white tracings in the quilt. I'm not being very articulate here, but I hope you can see from the photo what I mean. Because it is that, because it sort of resembles a half square triangle, like I said, there are a ton of different layouts that you could choose. I laid out a few other options, but this was my favorite. It was a great way to bust through a lot of the brights in my collection. And again, I threw everything into this because there's just such a riot of color that it all then kind of blends together. There's no one piece or one color that really stand out. I was thrilled to be able to use up some binding that I had in the collection. This pink and orange binding on the edge had been around for a little while. It was left over from a previous project. And I was thrilled that there was enough to finish this quilt with it. And I think the white border that separates the inner part of the quilt from the binding really gives the eye a place to rest and helps to set off the colors in the quilt without perhaps overwhelming it too much. Another bright scrappy quilt is this crayon quilt. I was inspired by a photo I saw on Pinterest and thought I could probably recreate this with some two and a half by four and a half inch bricks for the crayon and a 60 degree triangle for the end for the point of the crayon. I raided through my collection to see if I could find enough color, almost like the color wash quilt earlier, to make up the rows of each of these crayons. It turned out so well. I think it's an amazing, an amazing quilt for kids. It's just fun and bright and colorful and immediately identifiable, I think, as crayons. I call this quilt the Four Patch Pathways quilt. It's a really simple design with just four patch blocks alternating with background squares that just have the corners snowballed to create the gray pathways that you see in this quilt. Another great way to bust through a bunch of scraps in my collection. Everything here was two and a half inch squares except for the background pieces. And then instead of a piano key border, I ended up just using even more two and a half inch squares in this really scrappy border. It's a little time consuming to sew together, but I really love the impact of the scrappiness in the final border. This next quilt is called Woven Ribbons, and it is based on a block that I found in my 1000 Great Quilt Blocks book. This is an amazing resource if you're ever wondering what to do with half square triangles, what to do with four patches, what to do with bringing other bits and pieces together into additional quilt blocks. I use this for inspiration a lot. And in this, I found the interwoven puzzle block, which I then turned into this quilt. It's complicated in that there's loads and loads of half square triangles, but again, a great way to bust through some scraps, to use up some little pieces, and to put them all together into a quilt that I think has a really dramatic impact. Some of my favorite scrap quilts are the ones that bust through the scraps of colorful printed fabrics. My favorites aren't always the ones that have just as much or more background fabric. But in this instance, I think the woven effect that you get with the background and the colors makes it worth it. I call this next quilt the Hills and Valleys quilt. It's based on a tutorial from Jenny Doan at Missouri Star Quilt Company. Jenny calls it the Lakeview Terrace quilt, but to me it looks like hills and valleys. I was thrilled when the video came out from Missouri Star because it just seemed like an amazing way to use up even more scraps. And it was the sort of project that as I'm working on other things, I'll often cut my leftovers into the sizes needed for this quilt and set them aside until I have enough. I love the illusion of the hills and valleys undulating across the quilt that this brings. And again, the mix of chaos of fabric and colors really just speaks to me. It's a great beginner project. I think it would be amazing with Christmas fabrics. I think there's a lot of potential with this pattern. This is another pineapple quilt. In my previous scrappy trunk show, 
I showed you a pineapple quilt made with the Creative Grids pineapple block template that used all uh, solids. This is an example of the same block, the same Creative Grids template using just scrappy fabrics out of the collection. It's a fun, fun quilt with loads of movement in the blocks. The template makes it really easy to make. And this I think turned out really fun. The final quilt in this trunk show of scrappy quilts is my square dance quilt. There's a separate tutorial on how to make this quilt. It's an original pattern and it uses the leftover bits and pieces that you get from the sew and flip technique. I have a complete video to show you how to make and use these pieces. And this is the scrappy quilt made with those pieces. I hope you'll download the pattern from my website at www.bitsandpiecesquilting.com and give this quilt a try. And check out the tutorial as well for some guidance and help. I hope you enjoyed this video on my scrappy quilts. They're my very favorite type of quilt. And as you can see, I make a lot of scrappy quilts. I hope you'll give some of these a try. Let me know in the comments down below if you're a fan of scrap quilts or if any of these quilts have inspired you to give a scrappy quilt a try. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to make the most of your fabric bits and pieces.